we're in the last legs and things are going to change a little bit because they're going to get more intense and I'm going to have to give you some backloading. Like yesterday was a pretty intense day in the day. It's also an intense day, but it's intense in a different way. Now, I will say this, you know, yesterday I screwed up and I didn't turn on the screen thing and all kinds of stuff. And I actually didn't have the right mic on for the recording. It was just daylight savings time really screws with me. I hate this stuff. But, you know, if I give a free offer, it is only for people who show up. I had no less than 30 emails like, hey, where's the free ebook? And I was pretty specific. It's like, hey, if you are here, you get it. If you're not here and I shut it off like 10 minutes after five, which was like 10 or 15 minutes after the webinar was over. And it's a done deal. So if you don't show up and I do something like that, you're not getting it. And like I said, this is just it's amazing how good news travels fast. <laughs> All right. So if you're new here, this is how we roll. I'll do the presentation. If I say something in this webinar that makes you come up with a question, go ahead, type in your question, and when I come out of the webinar, I'll answer it because this is the way it goes. There's the presentation, and then there's a Q&A session afterwards because uh, I'm probably going to be more flexible on that as we go to the latter days because I've got like a big plan for a lot of this stuff. So, But right now, that just works best. So with that... We're going to jump into it. You need a sheet of paper, pen of paper, pen of paper, a calendar. The task and challenges are longer. And the things you should understand is 30 days to $2,500 is an action based course. If you do not do the task, you're not going to get the benefit. And I like many people like to pick, choose and refuse what they do. And it's like, well, I'll take a little bit of this. Sometimes you just have to do everything and i'll give you a great illustration of that i listened to earl nightingale's lead to feel probably 10 times before i really started doing stuff because i you know it was just very motivating it took me in a good place it put me in a good mood so i got benefit i got amazing benefit from just listening to it and not really doing the stuff but when i started doing the stuff i got more benefit in one day than i had in the previous three months that i had it because you have to put forth action and it's hard. It's really hard because many of people are drinking at the fountain of don't work hard, work smart. If you're working hard, you're not working smart. And all that little cute shit, sometimes working smart is actually working hard. It really is. So sometimes people get kind of lulled into if I'm doing too much or I'm working too hard, I'm not working smart. And then that ego thing comes out. Oh, I'm not working smart. Then I'm dumb. And then, you know, just before they shut themselves down mentally before they even get started, which is ridiculous. But this is an action based course. There's a lot of stuff for you to do. And some of it's going to be a little weird. Some of it's going to be over the top. Some of it's going to make you giggle like a little kid. And that's another part. It's fun. I have had some incredible, incredibly positive feedback from this course, and I'm really, really happy that people are getting benefit. People are making changes. Uh, I was talking to someone. She's done like 600 bucks. I think it was in one day from stuff she learned from the course. I mean, it's just just some awesome stuff. So with that, let's jump into it. This was yesterday. You know, how many of you did that? Because, see, now we're at the point with this boot camp where we're really going to get on to sales, 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 marketing, marketing, marketing. Because I took the Karate Kid methodology of putting together this course because you can give people awesome content. You can give people great techniques and advice. But if their poor habits are so dominant. They won't be able to utilize this advice because their habits will rule them. So if you are here at day 22 and you've been here since day one, you have some new habits. You have a new way of looking at the world. And I've heard over and over again in either YouTube comments, email comments, Facebook comments. I have done more in the last few weeks than I've done in months. And it's, that's the power of action. And this is the rub for all you folks who said that. Once you nail down your process, you'll be able to do even more, which is more freedom, 
more time to yourself, more money, whatever you want. So this is a very, very powerful, powerful technique, because the thing is, once you get your business up and running, this component never disappears. I know with the Internet making money in your sleep. And that's why eBay and Amazon FBA and other platforms are so seductive. They work. There are people I know a guy who's doing seven figures on Amazon FBA. It works. You know, he nets out about 350, which for him is great. So. But the thing is, if you learn how to do the groundwork, the rough and the rugged hard work of learning how to sell and how to market, you'll never be hungry. Your family will never go without because in this world, there are producers and there are consumers. If you produce way more than you consume, your family will be set. It's that simple. And that's what sales and marketing is about. So hopefully you did this because learning to do sales calls the old fashioned way, which is reaching out, talking to someone, developing the conversation, developing the rapport is a very, very valuable skill set to have. It's extremely valuable, even in 2014. And if you're new, I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. All right. Let's, whoops, hopefully, yeah, that should be good because it's not blinking. Uh, I hit my microphone, so, you know, I'm checking, you know, this is snafu. Snafu. <laughs> no, there's no snafus. Nothing can happen. Uh, it took me a while to really understand the difference between marketing and sales because commonly people say well marketing and sales are the same no they're not no they're not that's like saying that icing and cake is the same they go together very well but they're very very different and that's the thing marketing is telling stories telling the story of the company telling the story of the product like you know if you're married how you met your wife or your husband you told them about you which was telling stories of who you were that's marketing. It's just, hey, this is how this came to be. This is the nomenclature. This is the providence of this. That's that's very important for some people. And if the story is really, really remarkable, people will pay thousands of dollars for pieces of wood. You know this to be true. I know you're like, what? If the story is remarkable, people will pay thousands of dollars, even millions for pieces of wood. That's antiques. If you can say that this sideboard, which is not far removed from the sideboard that your grand aunt, grandma Jane had. But if this sideboard was owned by George Washington and it had a providence that can be proven to being passed down to the family where they can link that piece of wood from today all the way back to George Washington, that thing could go for millions. That's a piece of wood. Now, what makes that piece of wood so special? Because George Washington once upon a time owned it. And there is someone that is so impressed with that story that they will pony up the money. When I was in the storage auction business, I used to go to auctions all the time. And not just the storage auctions, but any auctions, because it was just you never knew what was going to happen. I have seen tractor seats go for a few hundred bucks because of where it came from i have seen goggles all types of stuff go really really high because of the story and the story is marketing and that's something that i really have paid attention to because i didn't really tell my story a lot on youtube because there's way more that i haven't told that's why i started you know the labor my days as a day laborer because that shit is kind of wild it's not as wild as the storage auction stuff but it's pretty wild and that's part of my story and it's part of my marketing because i came through some extremely hard circumstances really really and i worked my way through it and it didn't happen overnight there was no immediate gratification uh, there was those were rocky years but since I went through that path, I can tell you what you have to do to get out of wherever you may be because I went through it. And it's a process. It's not a one fell swoop deal like you wake up one day, you were ashy yesterday and the day you're classy. No, it is systematically making good choices over a long period of time. 
that is what got me out of the mess that I was in. Because it was bad choices over a short period of time that got me in the mess. And when you really look at it, that's what it is. That's the difference between successful people and non-successful people. And everyone wants to throw out the exception of uh, Maggie Baines, who was sitting at home and a fire truck fell on her. Yeah, those things happen. But, you know, the reason that when we see it on the news and it's so horrific and you tell your friends and you share it on Facebook because it doesn't happen all the time. It's remarkable. Once again, it's a remarkable what story. And that's why it has impact. That's why people talk about it. That's why people share it. Marketing is the story. Stories are hugely and profoundly important in everything that we do. Once you learn how to tell stories, your wallet will forever stay fat. And if you think about it, what are, what are books? Books are stories. What are movies? Movies are stories. What are television shows? They're stories. Like, you know, if you're a Facebook friend, like I just, I've always known about Breaking Bad, but I just started watching it. And Netflix, I love you. It is incredible story. The writing is stunning and brilliant, brilliant writing. Because this is the thing that this is, and I'm going to tell you, this is something that I learned before I saw it. The reason Breaking Bad works so well that every character on the show has an intricate story. There are no fluff characters. Everybody on the show is extremely well developed. Everyone, think about it. There's nobody, you know, the, the sister in law is a kleptomaniac. The son, you know, he's got cerebral palsy or I think uh, muscular dystrophy, one of them. Everybody has an, an intricate, because so when they cut away from, you know, the main, they're, they're all main characters. Every, this, this, that's why it moves so well. And it's kind of like American Horror Story. Very well developed characters. So you're, what you can take away from that is the more well developed, your story for your product for who you are the more that you're going to sell and you're going to sell effortlessly that's the power of stories because right now the end user which is you myself anyone that buys stuff is so incredibly intelligent if you make a poor buying decision and you weren't like completely and utterly scammed like Madoff type scam it's your fault the information's out there. Whenever I buy something, and I do it in the store all the time, I go to Amazon, I go to Google, and sometimes when you do your cross comparison shopping, you will find out that Amazon's not the cheapest. I've actually bought store stuff in the stores that was five, ten bucks cheaper. So you know that's it pays to do your research because I am like this. If I see a book, and since I don't have, you know, like I really don't have to have a book immediately. There's a few books I bought recently. They're on Kindle for like eight, nine dollars, twelve dollars, and I'm finding them for a penny physical hardback, and I'm paying four bucks for the book. I could wait a few days to get it. Sure, no problem. Four bucks for four bucks versus eight or twelve. That's a no-brainer for me. So definitely the end user. <clears throat> and I, I'm not alone like this. A lot of people shop like this, you know, and they use coupons and stuff. So you really have to have something different because if you have a good enough story going back to people paying hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions for pieces of wood, pieces of metal cars because of the story, like the original Batmobile that was from the 60s. I think there was like four or five of them. But if you own that car, you have a retirement plan in your garage. A serious one for not just yourself, but for your kids and their kids. If the money's properly invested, that is just the power of a story and just, you know, the thing. So don't underestimate the power of stories and the power of marketing. Now, this is another thing about marketing that I learned when I was an outside salesperson. Marketing never stops. You stop marketing, you turn off the spigot like waterfalls are perpetual. Waterfalls, rivers, streams, they carved out that canyon that you're looking at. They carved that stuff out. So understand, as you build your business, you must build a passion, a steady resonance to consistently marketing. Whatever you do, that's why there's I have 1000. Well, I have 800 and something videos you can see. 
And there's another 200 that are like private or unlisted for groups and stuff. But that's why there's so many. And the thing is, I deleted probably 200 because they were awful or I messed up or I was doing the wrong thing or I said the wrong thing. So it's a lot of videos for a reason, because the thing is, we are in a society where people must be consistently made aware that you exist. People think it's silly that Apple, McDonald's, Burger King, all these places that are extremely well known and have been around for a long time, Microsoft, that they spend billions on marketing. They know and they have the metrics to prove that when they cut their marketing budget or they stop doing things that make people aware of who they are, they lose market share. Because the thing is, there are so many voices out there. You have to be different. You have to have your story. You, you, and the thing is, what happened with Panda and some other Google updates is all of that fancy black hat stuff stuff that was working or trickeration that was working online they're killing that if you have a compelling blog and you know how to market your blog because the thing is blogs have to be good just that's just as priced of admission you know that's nothing special you have to have some type of differential uh it goes back to the marketing it never stops it, it's always that's why when you buy something from amazon you get like a few days, few weeks later, it's like, well, since you bought this, uh, maybe you want this because they know they have to keep it going and you have to keep it going for your service or your business. Because if you become, I mean, marketing is a job set skill all to itself. There are people on the Internet who make hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars marketing other people's products. I've had many of those people approach me when the storage auction thing. And I mean, they were just coming in. It's like, hey, I got this list of 10,000 people. They're hot. They're always looking for income opportunities. You know, I will let you use this list. But I want one that guy told me 70 percent. He said, I have a high conversion rate. And what I'm going to need is 70 percent of the deal for you to get to my list. And he didn't stutter. And I said no. And I never heard from him again. And most people were at 50 percent just straight up, you know, just boom. Because the thing is, they know the power of a list, which, you know, is in the first few days of 30 days to twenty five hundred bucks. Um, this, this just if you are a person listening to this webinar right now and you don't know what the hell you want to do, you don't have a business, you don't have any products. If you learn to market well online, you can make an incredible amount of money never selling a product that you create. Now, the other side to that is when you market other people's products and stuff, you're always on the hunt because the product's going to be good. Like, OK, give you an example, like my storage auction book. It's pretty much obsolete, not because the content was rotten. That has nothing to do with it. The content has been widely distributed across the net. It's everywhere. You know, there's storage auction blogs. There's people that's like, hey, I'm on YouTube and this is what you do. I mean, at one point, I would just see guys who were repeating lines verbatim from my book because it got them attention. So I knew that it was coming. It wasn't a planned obsolescence, but I knew it was coming because that's the nature of the Internet. But when you go back to stories and crafting things that are unique, uh, the new thing, like, there were people on YouTube, every time I did something, they would follow me and they would copy me. So when I started doing this and when I'm doing, you know, telling about my story of working in the labor pool, they can't copy that because that's my story. And just like I have a story that can't be copied or duplicated. So do you. There's something that you've done or are doing that makes you different. Understand, you don't have to necessarily be better. You just have to be different because if you're better, but you're seen as the same, you will be treated as if the same, even though you're better, even though you have the statistics, you have the white papers that you're better. You still have to penetrate that fog of there's all of this stuff coming at me every time I turn around because we're going to get to that point. Like in the movie Minority Report, when you like walk in the mall or you turn on your computer, it's going to start flashing all this stuff based on what you've done. That's 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 here already. It's just going to get larger. So being different and not necessarily better. You could actually be different and subpar and actually do better than everyone that's trying to be the same. 
happens in dating all the time. So think about that. Your marketing can never stop. Your marketing is this perpetual machine of saying, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And that's one of the reasons that in this course that you had to do so many things and you had to talk to people and reach out to people and just keep pitching your products. Because many people like pitching is dead. Old school pitching is not dead. New school hard sell pitching. Once again, it's not dead. It's all about execution. If you pitch poorly, you're dead anyway. If you pitch appropriately, you're not dead. When those guys go in the shark tank, start uh, when they go to shark tank, they're pitching. They have to pitch, and they don't have a lot of time to do it because uh, I actually watched one of the behind the scenes. It's like they're there for a long time, you know, going through this stuff. But the pitch part, that part that grabs the people, make the guy says, "Okay, I'm going to open up my wallet to you." That's very short. Pitching is not dead. How you pitch, your execution of your pitch is extremely important. But pitching is not dead. It's not dead. It's not obsolete because I read that, you know, going back to once again, that the consumer is extremely intelligent, which is true. And the consumer has all types of tools at their disposal to make good buying decisions. Once again, that is true. But if you have a good or great or awesome product and you know how to pitch well, you're going to move that product. If you have an awesome product or a great product and you don't know how to pitch, you don't know how to market, you are going out of business. Everyone loves that. Oh, my product's so good because those stories and they happen where someone makes this product and it's so good and it word of mouth and they never have to market. It's just it happens. But what did I just say in the beginning? Apple makes an awesome product. They market mcdonald's burger king they make good products they market mercedes-benz makes an awesome product they market porsche makes an awesome product they mark bentley they market because they know they have to it's built into the budget and it's built into the cause of the product now i think lamborghini and ferrari actually don't market a lot <laughs> they just go to shows and people are like oh can i get on the waiting list but part of their marketing is exclusivity You know, if you're getting a brand new Ferrari that you had to wait a year or two to get it and you know when you drive down the street, you're not going to see that car in your city unless you're in Miami or someplace. You're just not going to see it because there's only a handful around the world. I think there's certain models. They only do 50, maybe 150. That's it. Worldwide distribution. And the way I understand it, many of those cars are sold before they're made. It's like you pay up front and you get on the list or you don't get it. And that's that form of marketing. Louis Vuitton does the same thing. You can't with some of their. Well, actually, they've kind of broadened their stuff out because at one point you couldn't get Louis. I think it's um, Bergman bag. There's certain things that there's only one or two stores, if that many in the city where you can get certain things. And that's part of their marketing because they know that if they keep that cachet and they don't distribute themselves all over the place. They can maintain their price points because people who buy that stuff are it's very important to them that when they walk in the room, they're the only one rocking that or they're the only one driving that. It's very this is a group of people that's very, very important to them. They want that. So that's a form of marketing. Now, I've touched on some of this, but you know, yes, we live in the digital age, but there's some facts, and these are facts, and they're not gonna change. You must have something to sell. What you sell must be discovered. People must know about you and people must be willing to buy it for you to be successful. All three of those things have to happen. Unless you're, you know, even if you are marketing, marketing someone else's products, whoever products that you are marketing, these still things, they still apply. It doesn't go away. It does not go away. And many people still try to like, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do eyeballs. There are companies out there that have had millions of dollars of venture capital poured into them and they had no clear path to making money. That has really stopped. But Twitter, Twitter didn't have a clear class. It's like, hey, you know, everyone likes it. We're going to get a certain scalability. Everyone's using this. Look at the number of companies that came out like that five years ago with no clear plan. There's a few that are still around, but most of them are gone. 
You just can't keep putting money into something that doesn't generate money unless you're just a very charitable person. And it's some type of charity type event like, you know, Wikipedia, which was based on shared experiences. Something like that will continue to work. But a lot of these companies no. That's why, you know, what we talked about a few days ago, why Combinator is so powerful, because the thing is, it's like, OK, we're going to find out if this will make money or somebody wants to buy it, because that's the most important thing. Customer boot camp, you know, it's warming up outside. So this is one of your tasks and it's going to be great. A lot of times and I used to date women with high profile jobs and every time. There was always these events and these parties. They had to go to them because they were going to these parties with people that they worked with. But it was through these parties that they got promoted. And the reason is when you're at work, you're at work. You might have more face time with the CEO, the VP, whatever, at a barbecue. I'm talking 10, 15, 20 minutes. Like if you get like two hours with someone that they love you. That is the stuff that people get promoted on because it's a different environment. There's food and alcohol involved. I actually helped someone get promoted because her boss came over and we were talking and I am a lover of Greek mythology. And we started talking about the parallels of Greek mythology and Roman mythology and to a degree. North. I mean, we talked for about an hour because he was just like, no one likes this stuff. And I was like, oh, I love this stuff. We became BFFs and she would come over and we we're still talking. And he started asking me questions about her. He's like, well, what do you think? And, you know, I only met her like two months prior. So we're still getting to know each other. But me being socially aware this guy liked me he really liked me and he as he liked he liked me he valued my opinion so i did what any dude that was trying to get some ass did i lied for her. oh yeah we've known each other forever great analytical skills and i was like you know she makes her really different from a lot of other women that i've dated in the past She's very, very charitable because this guy, he, he mentioned his charitable. So I gave like 10 key points of stuff that he was passionate about that I picked up from the conversation and I inserted it in her into each one of those segments. And then on the way back, I was like, OK, this is what the deal. This is what I told him. And she was just like blown away. She's like, really? I was like, yeah, take notes because you're going to be quizzed on this. And she called me up. He's like, yeah, he asked me about this stuff. And four months later, she got a VP position. So this is how people, this type of stuff and what you can do for your company is the same thing. Because when, you know, you're doing, because everyone wants me to do like a, a, a webinar, not a webinar, but a seminar, meet up in a hotel. And I'm actually thinking about it. And one of the reasons I held off is I didn't want to be known forever and forever as the storage auction guy. I know it sounds crazy because, you know, yeah, I left some money on the table, but I've always looked toward the future. I live for now. But I have an eyeball on the future. So what you're going to do is put together a party. Now, this is the thing. It doesn't have to be a barbecue. It can be one if you want to. It can be something as simple as you go to Trader Joe's, get some cheap wine. I will tell you, German Riesling looks expensive, but it's really cheap and it's good. And just have a wine party and just say, hey, you know, I'm buying here. I want you, you know, discuss what I'm selling. And you learn how to pitch people in your home. You learn how to talk to people because the thing is, it's going to give you skills that are going to last you a lifetime. Because if you can put together a party and that's one of the reasons, like if you're in the, the 30 day group or you're in the face, you know, hustling university, there's this girl. And I actually learned this from someone I know that at 14, she created this jewelry company. She's 17 now. And the company did two hundred and fifty million dollars in sales. And what they do is peer-to-peer -peer selling or house party selling you know where people host a party and people come by the jury and they have a website yes 14 years old she's 17 18 now and the company is scaled up to 250 million dollars i also put some more details because her parents were not normal parents her mother was a developer when i read that i was like ah it made sense because she did about 30,000 on her own before the parents got involved which is extremely strong for a 15 year old it's incredibly strong for a 15 year old. So she definitely had a passion for what she was doing. She was really good at it. And, you know, she made like a thousand bucks her first few weeks. So 
definitely she hit a hit on a winning product. And what now let's talk about that. Because many people like because we know there's a jewelry store in every corner, right? There's Zales, there's uh Heisenberg, there's uh all kinds of stuff. But here's this 14 year old girl, four three and a half years ago, four years ago, I'm gonna sell jewelry in a crowded market, and she did it, and you know, that's like, yeah, you know, where we're put you know, we're gonna send her to college and I laugh because you know, she's going to college just purely because she wants to, not because she has to, because that degree would have not gotten her the money that she's already earned before she even got out of high school. I mean, the girls probably got because the thing is with the peer peer because half the profits are distributed. So they have they may have netted out 20, 30 million after it was all said and done. In a year. If you know about economies, you have a good financial education, you know that kind of money, period, whether it's one year or a lifetime, is generational wealth. You don't have to go stocks and, you know, you can do different stuff. You can do a lot of different stuff. So she, you know, it's just it sounds good. That's part of social culture. But the whole deal is just to show you the power of having a house party or a display party or a pitch party, whatever you want to call it. Very, very powerful way to sell services and products. And you're going to do one. You can do the party. You can do the webinar. You can do the seminar for your customers. So whatever your best service product, you're just going to put it, put it out there. You're going to have a bunch of product made and you're just going to do that. And you might realize a lot of money in one evening. You may. And then you may find out that, hey, wow, this product isn't working. And then you're going to get feedback like, OK, why is it working? Just ask them. Just like, why is it working? Well, I don't like the color. I don't like the smell. Well, no, this and this and this. You're going to get a lot of feedback all at once. And it's going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to sting a little bit because, you know, he's like, hey, I took Glenda said I was going to make some money. And these people are going, we don't like this. That's great. The sooner you find that out, the better. So you can improve or move on if you need to. That's great information. And you get it really, really quick because it's hard to get information out of people. I learned this selling cars. It's just people are just like, I don't want to be sold to. When really they do, <laughs> they just want to be sold to by an expert. They want to be made felt comfortable about the process because I was helping a friend who has an accounting business when he was opening up and I just was over there on the phones and I was helping him and I was calling people and setting appointments and he had three people and they were just sitting there like, how the heck? Because, you know, I, when you do a sales call, you have to control the conversation. And as you know, when you make people feel comfortable, you can do it. And it was just like, dang, he just controlled the conversation. I was like lined up appointment after appointment after appointment, because the thing is, I had been through that process so many times because I had one guy on the phone and I, he, you know, I called him up and I was like, hey, I'm calling from some certain tax service. And he's like, I'm not interested in having an accountant. And then I said, like, so you don't want to save a million dollars. And it was silence. I didn't say anything. It's like either he was going to hang up or he was going to re-engage. He re-engaged and I got the appointment. You know, just doing this stuff and putting yourself in all of these crazy experiences gives you this immense data bank of information and reactions to certain situations that you're not going to get sitting on the sidelines. So even if your party is a bust, that's still good news because you got information that you did not have before. So. I kind of talked about that because, you know, with your party, you're going to you're going to show then you're going to sell. Now, this is the other part. After you do your party, this is when you're going to do your business plan, because we really haven't talked about long term business plans, because I said it before. Frequently, business plans are like Moby Dick, great works of fiction. But now you've got numbers, you have feedback, you have all this stuff. So also. You know, if you're if you're new here and you haven't done day one through 21, you can still do this, but it can be a little daunting because if you've been here from day one to 21, you have a list, you have questions answered, you know, your customer better, you know, your product better. So this is the time that it makes sense to do this because you're going to write a 90 day business plan. Now, the one year, you know, I'm going to give you the differential between the business goals and the plan. The plan is 90 days. We're going to do this form of marketing. We're going to invest this much time. We're going to invest this much money. You're going to put all that stuff on a sheet of paper. What you're going to do. You're going to have your action plan for 90 days. For the next 90 days, this is what we're doing. Now, with the 180 day business growth is 
metrics like okay say you want to make a million in a year that's going to be your 360 business goal so you want to make 500,000 because the thing is you break those goals up into segments because if you just do the big chunk where we want to make a million a year then you start that in January and you just put your head down and you just work 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 and you look up in December and you're only at $250,000 in sales you're like what the hell happened you weren't paying attention at the wheel you fell asleep at the wheel but by segmenting your goals you can see if you're on track or if it's like, OK, I said, hey, I want to do 250. I've only done 100,000. OK, something's wrong. My product's wrong. My pricing's wrong. Something's wrong. So you get clues, feedback and pushback much earlier so you can facilitate a better plan and make change. So that's your task. Write your 90 day business plan after you do your pitch party, your house party, your barbecue, whatever. After. Because you're going to get a lot of information from doing that party if you're paying attention. A lot of information that will help you put together this stuff. Okay, we're out of that. <laughs> let's see what's going on. Uh, no, no, let's see what's the questions. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm set today. I'm set. I, I'm I, I was on air, sc showing screen. No, I'm not playing today. <laughs> uh, no, this is day 22. Yesterday was day 21. Unless I screwed up, which is possible, but these things will work out. But no, the day's 20, 22. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I worked on some stuff last night. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I'm telling you, I get Heisenberg. <laughs> I mean, I think it's Heidelberg or something. A lot of the jewelry shows, a lot of jewelry stores have gone out of business. Slide with a lot to write down might go a little slower for us old feeble folk. You're cracking me up, Dwayne. Josh, Heisenberg makes jewelry. I thought he made meth. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm like hooked on breaking bad i really am jasmine so it is right to say your business plan is action based and your business goes as metric money but yes because without the action you're not going to get to the metrics it's just not going to happen uh anna for days one to one to 21 what do i watch those i'll i'll tell you about that at the end yes breaking bad is awesome jelini do the marketing house party would be a refreshing change from those m &L setups that I've experienced? Yeah, because so, so this is the thing. You can do this the way that you want to do it. You can create a new way of doing it. You don't have to do it the, like the. I'm not going to piss on multi-level marketing because some of it works. It's just I actually got sucked into about maybe 10 of them early in life in like the 80s and the 90s. And what I didn't like is when I sat down and really realized that you know, and the guy told us at one of the parties, he said, you just go out and get people. Oh, don't even worry about the product. That didn't sit well with me. It didn't sit well with me at all. And that's one of the that was the last one I ever went to. Uh, Dwayne, hey, another thanks for the freebie yesterday. It really tied in with this webinar. Dwayne, <laughs> what up? I hope everything is good. Don't forget to check your YouTube account. I'm still the cop the book and all. They only have a PayPal account. Yeah, um, Gumroll only t doesn't take PayPal for some reason. Um, because this is the thing with that, I would have to manually do that from Square. I might do that, but uh, I may have to charge you a grip. Breaking Bad, Greg B. Breaking Bad is the shit. Yes, it is. Sure thing, Anna. Uh, Hector, what was the twenty-four hour business you started? Publishing. <laughs> so I started my publishing company. Yeah, I actually started selling that book long before I, it was finished. Uh, Michael, how does a person go about getting a customer to prepay for a product that hasn't been produced? I got incredible feedback from last month Friday assignment for an idea. Ask them. Does it say this? Like we're in the, we're in production, which is not a lie, and you figure out how much of that money you need to actually make the product. And you get that and you immediately make the product. Just ask them. Yep. 
after the Jelena, after you do the math, you see why multi-level marketing doesn't work for most people. Because the whole thing is you got to keep going out and getting people and getting out people. It's like if you're going to put that much energy into something, you might as well be selling a product that you make. It's just the dividends are so much better. Uh, David, marketing never stops. Do you have any ideas how to get the product placement on TV, radio, movie theaters for the low, low to complement email marketing and social media? Do some goofy. Um, that guy that did the our razors are fucking awesome. He got he he went everywhere from that one commercial that he made. He paid for. So you have going back to doing some goofy or different. It will get you put on. Uh, Greg, what is your views on calling 200 days, 200 leads a day to sell your service? I used to do that for a living. It works. It's not easy, but it works because if you call 200 people, you're only going to talk, really talk to maybe 20, which is 10 percent. Or if you know you've got a really good list, you might talk to 30 and depending upon, you know, the price, the product that I was selling was thousands of dollars so if i got one customer it was worth all the calls that's how the company looked at it but you know my fingers was like this has got to be crazy uh josh glenn have you done any videos on self-publishing i have not but in hustle university after i finish this up we're going to talk about the creation of digital products uh april glenn and i initially started this program with new business ideas but now I want to focus on the business I already have. Would starting all over from day one get me off to the right track with this program is going? Yeah, you're in the group. Just go from day one and just... I mean, a lot of you are probably going to, especially the people in the group, you're probably going to start this program two or three times. Because the thing is, every time you get a business idea, you can go to day one and just go through the steps. And you can find out very quickly if that's going to work or not. Uh, Chris, I just started my storage auction business in December. How do you deal with setbacks? The month got a nat that that this month got a nasty cold and my back went out. Needless to say, I've been on my ass for most of this month. I just want to get back up. You just gotta power through it, man. Because the thing is, when you get put back like that, all you can do is really heal. I mean, you know, be straight up honest with you. This is one of the reasons I jumped into publishing because after my time of being sick and my time in the hospital. I was a little concerned about the physicality of storage auctions. Like, can I do this? And I just saw so many people who were 60, 50, you know, they were just broke down from the business because it's so physical. You you got to really, really think about that because the storage auction business was absolutely wonderful, wonderful for me. It was outstanding. It was awesome. It changed my life. But it's not the same business it was when I was in it. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> I already got that set. Uh, Tony, I'm basically reselling from Craigslist. I haven't announced any customer list. How do you do it selling miscellaneous products? Oh, you haven't been here. You can do that very easily from Craigslist. You have to build a list and you have to ask for their information. Uh, Jonathan, hey, Glenn, I hope all is well in the G-verse using MailChimp, Craigslist, and Backpage to market for one kind of garage sales. Do you know of any tools that will allow me to take marketing to another level? For garage sales, that's a, I'm going to tell you the biggest thing for us for garage sales, and that's the reason I had signs made it up, and is the garage sale signs. Also, with, and this is something I learned from living in various neighborhoods, if you live in a very well-to-do neighborhood, your Craigslist ad will get you a lot of traffic. If you live in a crappy neighborhood, you're going to need your signs. Because I was living in one place, and I was just amazed, and then I had a sale in a nicer subdivision and the traffic difference was incredible the distinction was incredible uh Dwayne, the time management tips and ideas are key i love to hear more about implementing time management for those who are juggling too much at once the power six list is great great one to use what is out there that can help us strip away the distractions while being a single dad and mom and working a couple of jobs uh actually that's on my list after this i'm gonna do a power six webinar course so it's coming. Look for it. Yep. I, I was in Stone Mountain. I consider that a bad neighborhood. That's why I know, I know what you're dealing with. People don't want to spend any money. They don't want to spend any money. So with that, uh, let's see. Okay. All right, this is, uh, there's two, requ well, there's going to be more than two, but 
I just sent everyone a Dropbox. If you don't have Dropbox, go ahead and get it. Uh, let's see. I don't know a lot of people. I go on Craigslist, wanted list, stuff people I want to keep in mind and buy rooms with the stuff from the one that's to sell stuff to people before I buy it. That kind of goes back with some of the earlier stuff about going out, meeting people, building relationships, and developing lists. Uh, when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't know anybody either. So <laughs> you, you got to just get out there and meet people and make that happen. Let's see. Let's do BAM. As we were saying, because I sent this out earlier, and I'm going to have to keep sending it out. Uh, this is my raffle. Uh, just to let you know, this, this was a course, and I said I was going to do it too. This purchase is one raffle ticket. The winner of this raffle will receive four hours of personal one-on-one -on -one YouTube instruction. I'm going to teach you how to trick out your channel. You can buy as many tickets as you want. So I'm sending everybody a link. If you want a piece of the action, you go there. You can buy as many tickets as you want. And this is one of the tasks because I've done this before and it gets very, very interesting. So I will be marking it out. And for those of you who want, let's see. Yeah, I'm just showing you. I'm just got y'all all up under my dress and stuff. For anyone that wants to get into the Facebook group, I'm going to tell you what I've done. Uh, this is for the lady that asked earlier how to get to it. Let's see. And that's how to get to the Facebook group. Just go ahead and purchase that lifetime. I will tell you, the lifetime membership is going to become the annual membership at some point. Just to let you know. So it's an awesome deal. And it's a one-time fee. And you don't have to pay anymore. And the 30 days to $2,500 Facebook group is just going to grow and grow and grow because I'm going to make Hustling University more of a mastermind group. So a lot of good stuff is going to be in that group. You don't know what Dropbox is? <laughs> Dropbox. Okay. All right. Let's just quick deal with Dropbox. Dropbox is online storage, but... For me, like uh, what I do is I work on three different computers. So if I'm working on a document, I work on it in Dropbox. So when I'm like somewhere else, if I want to do it on my phone, I can't. It gives you an amazing amount of flexibility. Another thing that you can do with Dropbox is say you have your iPhone and you only have the 16 gigabytes, but you want to have access to a lot of stuff on your phone. You can have it on your Dropbox account and it's not on your phone. So you can carry a lot of information with you and not have it on your phone because with Dropbox and other things, why do you need 64 gigs on your iPad and stuff? You really don't. You really don't once you learn how to use some of these tools and they give you two gigabytes free. And then between Dropbox, Google Drive and whatever, you can have damn near 50 gigabytes of free storage across the web and you don't have to pay for it. And also, it's a challenge to myself because I'm trying to max it out because when you get referrals, they give you like 500 megabytes. And I started this Sunday and the day is Tuesday and I'm thinking I'm at six. So the max you can do is 10. So I'm trying to see how long can I just, you know, doing the stuff. I mean, essentially the stuff that I'm telling you, to, I'm doing it. It's like, well, I want to get to the max on that account. So I've got to let people know about it and I've got to send out the link. Yeah, so I'm doing the same things I'm telling you to do because the thing is, it doesn't always work instantly, but if you keep on, it eventually works because eventually I will get to the, t the 16 gigabytes for free. It's just going to take me some time. and It's, it's like a little tip. It's, it's a social experiment for me. Um, Don't know about that. I don't know about that. That's an ideal. Well, part of the the task of the raffle was to do something you've never done before. So at some point, maybe, maybe not. I don't know yet. That's some, that's, that's some I need. To, I'm waiting on someone to download that. That's actually a private consultation. Uh, one drives another one. I have a Dropbox. Yeah. Yeah. The cloud storage is awesome. 
Okay, so it is 459, it's 449, and trying to keep this under an hour. You know, if there's a few more questions that pop up, once again, you can see, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all that stuff I tell you to do. This is for folks who want to sign up for the boot camp. Bam, you got it. And, you know, I already sent the raffle deal out and I sent the Dropbox out. But that's the deal, so I don't have to send out any emails. But we're going to have a lot of fun in uh, 30 days to $2,500 per month. Because essentially, when I created this course, it was with the constraint that I wanted to get you as much good information as possible in less than an hour because it was going to be 30 days. So it's going to be 30 hours, 30 hours plus of content. And, you know, when you start getting into two and three hours at a time, people kind of check out because I've, I've done a lot of webinars and I know this, you know, 45 minutes to maybe an hour and a half. And I really try to stay away from an hour and a half, but 45 minutes to an hour is a real good spot where people stay engaged. They get their information and they're not worn out. I have actually listened to webinars that were two hours and my mind started wandering after about the hour and 15 minute mark, hour and 30. It was just like, OK, when is this going to be over? So that's a certain method to this. But saying that, I'm going to expand on a lot of the stuff that went into these courses because like day one could easily been four hours. But, you know, I didn't want to have people here for four hours. So we're going to enhance this stuff once I'm done. It's going to be a lot of fun. OK, so let's see. Any more questions? Jolene, I just downloaded the four hour webinar. May the force be with you, man. All right. This is Glendon. And I will see you on the good side. I will be here again tomorrow, day 23, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Thanks for coming out. And uh, I'll see you on the good side.